Hello, I'm Kendall House, and welcome back. Uh, we've already discussed how Hamilton's idea of neighbor-modulated fitness made fitness dependent on the kinds of interactions that were occurring with other organisms. Uh, in this presentation, which is quite short, we're going to introduce his other idea that changed how we think about fitness, and this is the idea of inclusive fitness. I hope you enjoy it. This presentation is called, What is Inclusive Fitness? So we've been talking about the way that William Hamilton reconceptualized reproductive fitness, and he did this in the early 1960s. We've already considered his concept of neighbor modulated fitness, and this is simply the idea that in social relationships, the people who are most proximate to us, who we interact with, have impacts on our fitness. The idea that we're going to look at in this presentation is what he called inclusive fitness. And this is the idea that all kinds of relatives can have impacts on our fitness. And that may seem obvious, uh, but it wasn't. So inclusive fitness arrived in two remarkable papers that also introduced the concept of neighbor modulated fitness. In 1963, Hamilton published The Evolution of Altruistic Behavior. And in 1964, he published The Genetical Evolution of Social Behavior in two parts. And both of these publications came while he was still a graduate student and at a time when he thought he was about to be expelled from graduate school for not doing anything. And that would have been really remarkable had that happened. But genetical evolution of social behavior was written first, and the ideas we've been talking about come from that paper. So a way that Hamilton approached this in developing his thinking on inclusive fitness was to point out that organisms have two ways that they can invest their reproductive resources. One thing that they can do is that they can invest parental care into the offspring that they already have. Another thing that they can do is they can invest in having yet more offspring. So he calls these the parental care option and the fertility option. And Hamilton is interested here in parental investment. So he argues that whenever parental care serves to increase reproductive success by increasing the survival to adulthood of offspring, it should be favored by natural selection. So that means that instead of just having more offspring and letting loose of them, you hang on to them and try to take care of them. And this would mean that any gene that favors parental care should be favored by natural selection. Now Hamilton then asks the question, well, why only parents? Uh, why should we only expect parents to invest? And he notes that there is nothing special about the parent-offspring relation except its close degree. So we all know that we often see and expect grandparents, as we call them, to take a great interest in their grandchildren. And this would be called grandparental investment. And this uh, makes perfect sense that uh, you invest in your own offspring and then you invest in the offspring of your offspring. But then why only direct descendants? And Hamilton's reasoning here is that in terms of genetic relatedness, the relation between an uncle and a nephew or a niece or an aunt or a nephew and a niece is just as close as that between a grandparent and a grandchild. So why then shouldn't we expect aunts and uncles, as we call them, to put care and investment into nieces and nephews, as we refer to them in English? And social anthropologists call this oblique investment, and indeed it happens. But Hamilton then says, why stop there? 
And uh, why not develop a general theory that would take into account all kinds of relatives? And this is exactly what Hamilton's theory of inclusive fitness is intended to do. It's a general theory that takes into account the investments that all kinds of relatives might make in one another based on genetic interest. So inclusive fitness is a sum of two kinds of fitness, one that's usually called direct fitness, and this would be the investment of a parent in offspring and also a grandparent into that parent and their offspring. And this makes perfect sense to us, again, because it's a direct line of descent. But to this, we have to add indirect fitness. And this would be, as in our example of an aunt and uncle investing in their nieces and nephews or cousins investing in one another, um, any of these relationships between relatives, and you add together the direct fitness plus the indirect fitness, and that gives you what Hamilton calls inclusive fitness. Now, you might be wondering at this point, well, how does this connect to altruism? And how does it connect to neighbor-modulated fitness? And that's what we're going to discuss next, uh, but it takes just a little bit of math. And so that will be our next presentation. Thank you for listening.